Hi, everyone. Welcome to our third ever Learning Labs. Um, today, my name is Kirby Ku. I am on the uh, growth team here at ChainGuard. And uh, today we're going to be going over the PHP and Laravel image with the one and only Erica Heidi. Um, before I get started, um, I just wanted to uh, bring your attention to a few housekeeping items. On your right side, you'll see a couple of icons. The first one is the chat icon where you can um, comment like where you're tuning in from. Um, the second icon with the little question mark is where you can submit questions. And if you ask a question in the chat, we'll make sure to mark it to that list so that you can follow up. And if we don't know the question right away, we'll make sure to get back to you. Um, and then finally, um, Oh, sorry, someone seems like they don't have sound. Okay, perfect, they have sound. Okay, just wanted to. And finally, um, if you have any other um, images that you want us to do for upcoming ones, this is a monthly installment, please be sure to um, comment or request or reach out to me, Kirby at chainguard.dev, um, and we'll happy to add it to the schedule. So without further ado, the one and only Erica Heidi. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining today for our Learning Labs PHP edition. And um, yeah, let me start sharing my slides. Um, here. Okay. So today we're going to talk about creating safer PHP runtimes. I'll talk about ChainGuard images for the PHP ecosystem. I'm Erica and I am a developer experience engineer at ChainGuard and I write docs, I create tutorials, presentations, demos. I really like open source and uh, PHP. I'm a PHP developer also. And I created a few open source projects, mostly on the CLI. And I have too many hobbies. <laughs> Some people may know me from 3D printing or other things. Anyways, um, so what we will cover today. I'll start talking a little bit about software supply chain security and CVEs. What are they? What those numbers mean, etc. And then I will introduce ChainGuard images. And then I will talk about migrating to PHP ChainGuard images. And then we'll see some demos if time allows. OK, so let's get started with a primer on software supply chain security and CVEs. So what is, what is that? Um, just like in manufacturing industries, uh, the process of creating, building, and delivering software depends on a large chain of dependencies, and we call that software supply chain. Um, a compromise in any point of that chain represents a security issue, and it can be malicious or unintentional, but it's still a security issue. And a lot of people say that uh, your chain is just as strong as your weakest link. So that's true. Uh, if you have a compromise in any point of the chain, then you have a, you are vulnerable. Um, there are some preventive actions for security issues in the supply chain. And two of the main things that we can think about is limiting the surface for attack and enforcing provenance attestations. And we'll talk a little bit about that later. So what are CVEs? CVE stands for Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures. It is a huge database. And these are publicly, publicly disclosed software vulnerabilities. This is what we know about. Of course, there are certainly a lot of undisclosed vulnerabilities, but we can worry about these that, because that's what we know about. They are disclosed. Uh, the CVE program started in 1999, 
Nowadays, it has over 200,000 entries, registered vulnerabilities, and every day there are more being added. Each CDE has a score, and this is uh, attributed with a framework called CVSS, Common Vulnerability Scoring System, and it provides a framework to classify vulnerabilities by severity. And there is a number, there's a series of questions like whether that uh, exposes uh, um, remote code, code execution or any other, what it, what it allows uh, attackers to do. And translating, there's like this, the names like the low, medium, high, and critical are, we are, we know more, like it's more used, the terms is easier to understand, low, medium, high, critical. Um, there are a few uh, CLI scanners that you can use to uh, scan their container images. So two of these, these are the most common ones, Gripe and Trivi. They are popular ones. And you can scan container images to see, uh, to detect the presence of affected packages. Uh, the issue with CVEs is that they are a lot of uh, they they are time consuming, and they uh, there are lots of uh, false positives, but also there is a delay in releasing the patches in official repositories. So often you have to manually patch CVEs. There's a lot of work for any developer team. And how many is too many? Like we're talking about CVEs and what is in the images that we use nowadays? How many CVEs and how, how serious they are? So I made this poll on Twitter last week to find out what people are using mostly as base images for PHP environments. I already knew kind of, but I wanted to make the poll so I could show the results here. And, um, Ubuntu and Debian base are most used uh, base images. Um, we're talking development, but also production. A lot of people don't worry too much about their base images and they use whatever is more popular or whatever they are more used to for development, for instance. So they use the same base image for production. And um, on the right, we have a graph showing a comparison between popular PHP images uh, from the poll, you can see that the PHP latest and PHP FPM latest, they are, they have hundreds of CVEs, not fixed CVEs. Um, and a lot of them are unknown, but they will see something about that in a moment. Um, but there are also high uh, high severity CVEs and also medium high. And the problem with CVEs is that they can be chained together. So even if a CVE is like medium or low, uh, attackers can sometimes chain together uh, multiple CVEs, multiple vulnerabilities to get a remote code execution, for instance. Um, so each CVE is important, let's say. And the comparison is huge, like a huge drop uh, compared with Alpine images, uh, Alpine images have around 20 something CVEs. So these numbers are from yesterday. And another important thing is how long does it take for a CVE to be fixed? This is also crucial. And also in the context of PHP, we also have often CVEs that are really uh, serious in the PHP ecosystem. So this is a new CVE that was published last week and is the 2024-2961. This affects glibc and it poses a significant risk. So the score is 8.8, uh, is an important impact. It can it can cause remote code execution. It can allow for a remote code, code execution. And so it, um, data, data corruption, uh, things like that, that can cause remote code, can allow for remote code execution. So this is serial CVE. And this doesn't affect Alpine because Alpine doesn't use GLibc, 
But for the Debian images, they are vulnerable and there is not a yet a fix on the, or on the official repos. So if you just update your image install today PHP on the, with these base images, they are still vulnerable. You have to manually patch them. Okay, so we talked about TVEs in software supply chain security. Um, and now I'm going to start talking about Tengar images and I will introduce that, uh, why uh, these images are different, what do they have uh, that make them better? So Tengar images are minimal images and they are flat. Uh, they are single layer images. They are based on Wolfie, which is a Linux undistro. We call it an undistro because it doesn't have normal things that we normally see in a distribution, doesn't have kernel and other things that uh, don't make sense for uh, containers. So this distro was built specifically for clouds, for containers. And um, Jengard built Volfi because the alternatives were not good enough to provide zero CVE images. That was the final goal. The goal for us is always to have zero CVEs in our images. And if we depended on other base distros, we would always be behind. So uh, there was a need to write something from the ground up and with min minimalist and also with quick a quick um, schedule of updates that allows for quick patching CVEs. Uh, we talked about surface for attack and one of the things that are important that are the main points of chain guard images are, is that they are small, they are minimal, they have only what you need to run your application or to build your application because there are different versions but for production images you only need the runtime. You don't need Bash, you don't need a package manager, you don't need a composer, you don't need any of these things on a production image. It's actually a security issue if you have those things at the end of the day. So it's better to not have them. Uh, you don't need APK, you don't need uh, APT or package manager, you don't need any of these in a runtime. Um, so, a part of that, the minimal images in a small attack surface, we also have provenance at the stations. So that uh, guarantees that the image and the artifacts come from a trusted source, come from where it, sh so it should be. Um, so these are uh, these signatures, they are uploaded alongside the image on the registry so you can uh, download the attestations using software like Cosign and also um, Crane. Uh, so you can download the attestations and see uh, where the image comes from. There is also high quality software bill of materials to attest for every piece of software that is included in the image. So two critical things, smaller attack surface and provenance attestations. In talking about a smaller attack surface, we saw before the comparison of Debian images, Debian-based images with PHP, uh, with Alpine images, and you could see the huge difference from number of CVEs. Alpine images are smaller, they are known to be smaller, but chain guard images are even smaller. So we have the default, like the latest PHP Alpine and latest Chain guard PHP. The Alpine has almost 100 megabytes, and the chain guard image has less than 40 megabytes. So that's obviously a smaller attack surface. Now let's compare Alpine images because it's not. It's kind of even unfair to compare Debian images, uh, although everybody's using them. But let's compare Alpine images with chain guard images to make it easier. Right. Um, so Alpine now has around 20 something TVEs. 
that fluctuates, but uh, yeah, often has around that number and takes a little bit of time to get the patches uh, available on the repos. Meanwhile, the Ting RPG image is the, the latest, uh, has zero CVEs as of yesterday, and the FPM image has one CVE. The Laravel image is based on FPM, so it also has one CVE. So that is the difference. And in the Alpine, there is, uh, I think, one high or two high, high severity um, CVEs. So there's still high severity CVEs. The, chain guard, the only one that is on the chain guard is a medium. So, so this, this uh, of course, the numbers fluctuate. So we are not always zero CVE because if a CVE comes out today, there is no patch of it. We don't create the patch. We don't have the, that uh, bandwidth to fix everything in the world. So we need the patch to be available on official repositories before we can patch our packages in Wolfie. So it can be a couple of days, a few days, depends. Remember CVE 2961 that we just showed you uh, recently, <laughs> in a few slides back. So um, there is no patch yet for the, the, there's no, the patch is available, but the packages are not updated on Debian Ubuntu images. And the latest uh, version on both is already updated. So you can see on the output that there, this thing on the circle is the fixed in this version. So version 239R2 has a, already fixed that CVE. So that why, that's why it doesn't show on the, on the CVE scan. It's already fixed. Okay, <clears throat> so you saw, we saw so far about CVEs, our introduction, software supply chain, and we saw the comparisons about images. So it's kind of a no brainer that you want an uh, image to use images that have, that have less, less CVEs, zero CVEs if possible. Nobody wants to run an image to run software full of CVEs, even if a f just a few uh, 20 or something, you don't want that. Of course, you want to use an image that doesn't have any vulnerabilities. And let's see about migrating to Chengar images. So what? why you saw how they are different, but how does that apply in practice? How do you migrate? What are the caveats? So let's talk about these now. So in a nutshell, there are four steps to migrate to Chengar images. And firstly, of course, you have to identify which image is the closest to what you are using today, or what, what, what it has your what you need. And you can check the images directory, images.chengar.dev to find an image that is suitable for you. Or you can also use the Wolfi base image, which is a clean canvas where you can install everything. The Wolfi base image has a APK, has a package manager, and you can install whatever you want. It works as a regular base image, regular distro. But then first, you're gonna use a dev variant or the base, the Wolfi base image, second step is to use a builder image because that is easier for migrating first. So every image has uh, at least two versions, the builder and the distroless version. So uh, when we compare the images, especially you're talking about the distroless images, because these are the smaller and uh, the safest images you can use. These are the images that don't have a package manager, don't have a shell, uh, but before you migrate to distroless image, it's important to uh, create your environment on a development image, on a builder image, so that you can see everything working and it's easier to debug also. So for instance, for PHP, we have PHP 
latest dev, latest FPM dev, we have Laravel dev as well. So all these can you can use all of these images. They have composer on them, they have AP key, they have um, bash, you can log in. So you can use them normally as any other image and they are still minimal and very like uh, much better than other images in terms of attack surface attack and everything else. Um, after that, you have to identify the packages you need to install, dependencies. Um, maybe you need a few additional dependencies or maybe a common, it has a different name in Wolfie. There are a few commons that are different, uh, like add user, user add, things like that, but very similar to Alpine. And then finally, evaluate the option of using the Docker multi-stage build in order to create a final distroless image that suits your needs and has only a runtime for your application. So we're gonna see a little bit more of that in practice. Another important thing is that if you are migrating from Debian and Ubuntu, then of course it's gonna change because it's not APT. There is no APT, it's AP key. So you replace apt install from, with apt add, and then apt remove AP, is apt del, apt update is apt update. So there are a few uh, migration things that you should do in your Docker file to migrate from other package managers to AP key. If you are on Red Hat also from Yum to AP key, and that's, uh, that's, these are a few things in, in, to keep in mind for if you are migrating from known Alpine systems, known APK systems. Um, so you can also use the images for development. Uh, this gives you uh, the ability to run PHP without having uh, PHP installed on your machine, on your host. You can use the images for building, for installing dependencies with Composer, and running the server, the built-in server. So for instance, to run Composer, in this case for PHP, uh, then you can use a command like this, create a shared volume, and then you set the entry point to Composer that is already in this image for convenience. Uh, you're gonna have to use the root user for uh, inside the container, of course, uh, to avoid permission issues because your system user will have a different UID from the PHP user on the whole, on the glass machine, on the container. And then you can run any composer commands like this. Uh, afterwards, you might have to fix permissions, but you can run and work on your host machine and use these commands to develop and run and build the, the PHP application and run. For Laravel, uh, we have a brand new image that was released just a few weeks ago. Was, uh, I was testing that and still... Um, we appreciate feedback if you have, of course. But yeah, so this image is already available. And you the difference with this image is that uh, it also has a Laravel user with UID 1000. So that facilitates a lot running Composer and running other commands from your host machine. Uh, for most people, at least on Linux environments, you will have a regular user with the same UID, so you won't run into permission issues. And this first command is to create a new Laravel application from scratch. And then also you can run the second command in this slide to create, uh, to use Laravel serve, to serve the application and redirect the ports so you can access from your host machine and work normally and use that as a development environment without the need to have a Docker Compose set up. But you can also use Docker Compose and that will give you a better experience overall because the environment can keep uh, 
can be persisted. So you can have the database that actually persists uh, the data to keep developing the application. This is my favorite method of, for development using the, the, these images. Is using um, so you can create a whole lamp setup with nginx, PHP, FPM. In this the case, Lar the Laravel image is based on the, Lar the our FPM image, so it has a the service running. And then you can create the lamp using all chain guard images to have the whole environment uh, with low CVEs safer. Um, but now let's talk about distralized images, how, working with distralized images. And let's say you develop your application and you're going to go to production. And then you want to, or you create a GitHub action, something that, something that is going to run on command line. And this is an example. So multi-stage builds are very useful to create in safer container images is a technique that you can use to build uh, your application in one stage and then have a second stage for your runtime. So you just copy the artifacts from your builder environment into your final distroless image that doesn't have a package manager or a poser or anything. You don't need those, right, for a runtime. So in this example, we are building a CLI application using the latest dev as a builder. Then we use, set the user to root to be able to copy files. And then we change to the user PHP, install Composer. And then on the second stage, that's going to be the actual runtime. We copy the files from the Composer. It's going to be all the application files, but already with Composer dependencies. And then set the entry point. For web applications and the distroless image, it's going to be pretty much the same. Uh, what changes is that you're going to use the latest FPM dev image as a builder and the latest FPM as your runtime. And you don't set the entry point because this is a service. The FPM image runs as a service. You will need, though, uh, to compose your environment, of course, you're going to need a, a web server to hold, to serve alongside FPM, Nginx, to work alongside this image. And for Laravel application, uh, it would be pretty much similar to this, very similar, but you will add a few more steps. But you don't, you cannot run the migration here isolated because you need the database unless it's uh, SQLite. Uh, yeah. But if you are using a web server that is not like a remote service or something, you're going to need the server to be up so you can run the migration. So usually you don't have it running on the Docker file, but you can uh, have other things, uh, for instance, generating the key. Um, assets, things like that, you can set uh, also run on the Docker file to have the image uh, almost ready, just needing a few pre-deployment uh, commands. OK, so we have reached the demo slide. So we can have now a few demos. I'm going to. Share my terminal. Um, let me change this and OK, so the first thing I wanted to show, of course, a live gripe scan, because uh, maybe you don't believe me. So this is how you use. Uh, you can um, let me do it. 
control R. So usually the, the minus Q is to not show a whole bunch of things and only not fix it is to show only CVEs that are not fixed. Otherwise it's gonna also show a, a lot of other things that are already fixed. So PHP Alpine, 20 something, as far as, uh, according to the last scan that I ran yesterday. And meanwhile, I'm gonna set up a new, oh yeah, it came. So these are all the, the vulnerabilities that are currently on the PHP Alpine image. So we have one high on the CLI, PHP CLI, and a lot of mediums on BusyBox, Curl. So one, some of these were on at some point on our on Chengar images, like a month ago or something that they were already fixed. Um, yes, and then of course I'm gonna run also cgr.slash. Yes, no vulnerabilities found, which is great. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna now run. I planned to do something. I yesterday I asked a few examples, like if I someone had a good app, Laravel app to for a demo, and I ended up uh, not having time to uh, create my own demo, but. Uh, a lot of people recommended the um, Breeze starter kit from Laravel, and we actually gonna build a little Breeze app now using only PHP and guard images. So let's see, let's go. So first, uh, I, I have the the doc page here. So the first step is to create a Laravel app, a regular Laravel app, and then we will then later require the Breeze package and then run some commands, run migrations to have it working. So I'll start creating a new Laravel app. I have the commands in another, in another because I ran it before, of course. I'm not silly. <laughs> so. This first command is going to create a new Laravel app. I'm calling it demo Laravel. Basically, is what I showed before. Uh, this is using Composer as entry point because we're going to run Composer create project and then uh, using the latest dev variant of the Laravel image. No issues there because I also uh, have the same UID user, so you should not run into permission issues if you are on Linux. Okay, ah, oh, it already run everything. <laughs> ah, no, but but when you start in Breeze, there are new migrations to run. Yeah, I remember that. Okay, so we have the basic app now. So I'm gonna enter here demo Laravel. And now I can require Breeze. So I'm going to run also the latest dev variants, and I'm going to run Composer require Laravel Breeze dash dash dev. So Breeze, I will read the introduction. It's a library, oh no, is it a um, package that gives you a head start building your new Laravel application. And it has authentication and already scaffolded for you. So you can just install these things and have already users uh, registering, you know, be able to register user and um, log in everything already. So Yes, we have now Breeze, and the next step is to run migrations. So for the migrations, we're gonna use the artisan commands. Let me clear here, so it's better to see. 
So pretty much the same, what's going to change here is just the entry point that we're going to run artisan migrate. And this uses, um, there's nothing to migrate. Uh, I think it, the migrate is already run, maybe. Yeah, breeze, the migrations, yes. Um, and then after that, we also need to run NPM. So for that, we can run the NPM image. We don't need to install it on our image. If we are just, you know, developing the app. And you don't need to install NPM on your machine, which is the best thing. Okay. And now it's everything is there already. So we can run, we can serve the app now. And the app, the command to, to do that, we're going to use the Docker run with uh, artisan serve, but then we create a port redirect. So this is already running. And now I have to share my screen to access. I'm going to share the entire screen back to the terminal, but then I will bring here the browser. So yes, it's here. So this uh, is a breeze, oops, a breeze uh, application Template, oh. but I don't see, oh, that's something missing, I think. Let me see the docs again. <laughs> I missed it some step. Oh, I missed breeze install. That's why the migration didn't install, we didn't do anything different. So I'm gonna run it now. What is a demo without a hiccup, right? Um, so let's get a, one of these uh, artisan commands. Yeah, this one. So we can do artisan, I think it's breeze install, yes. It's pretty cool, this breeze thing. Um, What's that? Let me see. I'm missing something. Maybe. Oh, I did run the composer require, right? Composer require breeze. Let me see. Entry point composer require Laravel breeze. And then. Breeze install. Mm. Well, something is strange here, but I did run this demo before and it worked. So I have another folder with it. Maybe what I did in the wrong order that may, that's why probably I have an issue. Let me try the. Oh, okay. The common needs to be interactive. Thank you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Thanks, Vinicius. Oh, wait. Yes. Okay, now it works. I want blade with alpine. Yes. Best, of course. <laughs> Best is just easier. Um, okay. 
now we can run the migration. We have to run the migration again. The migration now is going to work. Nothing to migrate. Wait. Please install. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it tried to run npm on the on there. I'm going to run npm already because maybe need something extra. Okay, solid a bunch of packages. Maybe that's what that's why. Um Yeah, I'm going to try yeah, nothing to migrate. Maybe it's already migrated then, well, let's serve and see. Serve and see. It should show the logging and register. Ah, yes. Aqui, uh, vamos lá. Logging, you can log in and you can register. Opa. Oh, yeah, I miss it and run that. Knew it. No problemo. So we can run npm run dev. And Wow, it's a big logo. I think it probably needs a new assets uh, thing to install assets, but yeah. So this is correct. NPM, NPM run that. NPM. Is it blocking? Did I run that? Yeah, something probably needs extra to be done, but <laughs> for the assets, because it's not showing here. I think there is something to do with the server. I need to expose this door probably also. Um, yeah, it's the first thing I, it's the first time I, I deal with this Laravel breeze thing. So I think if I add a port here, it maybe it works. Let me see. Minus P five, one, seven, three. No, it needs something else. <laughs> okay, but I have yeah. This this uh this is a more of a assets issue. I think uh, some common that I'm missing that I don't see here in the docs. But you get the the gist of it, right? So you can use it for you can use them for uh, development. But if you wanna um like a better experience overall, I would recommend using the Docker Compose setup. This is nice for installing quickly a project that is already um, on GitHub and you want to try locally or just create a new bootstrap, new apps uh, for running with more components. If you have more services, like this apparently uses uh, NPM needs to be running or something then you might need a Docker Compose setup to have multiple services. Um, yes, because this, yeah, is the NPM, because the NPM image doesn't have access to the application files at the moment. So that's why it's, uh, 
I think that's the reason. Um, oh, he actually does have access to the volume. Yeah, something needs to be configured for the NPM image to be readily available. In this case, you could install NPM on the builder image. It would be much easier because I didn't prepare the image beforehand. Anyways, uh, the other demo I have is uh, actually Docker Compose setup. Let me see. I have a demo here. So this is uh, pretty much what I showed on the on the slide. Uh, it's using the latest Laravel dev for to run to run the FPM server um, because the the thing is that this image has already the extensions that are required by Laravel, the Laravel image. With the PHP FPM image, you have to install a few extra extensions. Oops. And with this, you have a more like a similar to production, an environment that is more similar to production because you will be dealing with different services and you're going to be dealing with a real database uh, running on a separate container and the Nginx only another container. So um, at some point, it's, it's good to have this set up, even if you start with uh, no strings attached. And then now, is it 8,000? Yes, so now it's a regular, this is a regular Laravel application built with the creates common, the creates uh, from Composer, but it has, this environment has uh, database setup, so you could run migrations, you could do everything uh, here. And the logs, of course, are showing here on the, yes. Okay, so these are uh, the demos I had. Um, and now we are about 10 minutes. So I have 10, 10 minutes left, so we're gonna go for questions. And let me put this lap, the slides back up. Oh. Questions and I already I will leave this here if you want. Ah, but that the link is not <laughs> click is not. Uh, yeah, so this I'll share these slides later on my Twitter, and there's this uh, some resources here um, because of course uh, an event like this is more to show up, show things. Uh, but the reference is the best thing that you can do if you're gonna get started. There's a few different resources here on these links, and um, the migrating to PHP Chengar images. This is a guide I wrote and has a lot of details on, on how to uh, migrate. And also the Laravel image docs has an example set up and all those commands to run Composer to create a new app. So check these out later. Okay, and thank you, but let's open for questions now. Uh, okay, so, oh, yeah, you go. <laughs> Hey, Erica, thank you so much. Um, I think there was a question here. Does ChainGuard, oh, I, does ChainGuard have or plan to have PHP images other than FPM such as Swole, FrankenPHP, et cetera? I think there is a comment here. Yeah. Oh, Lisa answered it. Yeah, we have, we talked, uh, we have someone that wanted to contribute to Wolfie uh, for FrankenPHP packages. Um, and we are still evaluating like the maintainability of that because this will this requires a different build of PHP. 
So our current build follows Alpine, uh, is, a, is meant to be a drop-in replacement for Alpine images. And it follows uh, the build, the same build, mostly like the arguments, everything. So it's a uh, NTS, non-thread safe. Um, and we don't know, I cannot say because we don't know if it's possible to it's be, it might be a burden to maintain. So it depends on uh, demand. If a lot of people want it, maybe we we go for it. But uh, so far we wanted to start with a limited set that we can keep always updated and you know keep keep secure and and things like that. If we have too many images and nobody uses them, like uh, then it's gonna be an issue also because we cannot keep them also always updated. <laughs> I hope that answers your question. I see that Lisa also answered Derek's question for the most part, but um, I'll just bring it up here. And mm -hmm. you have. Building with chain guard images seems to be straightforward. Docker work, are there any special considerations or challenges to watch out for? Yes, so uh, the, the challenges uh, that I would say is if you want to use the distroless image and for uh, installing additional extensions because the most like uh, PHP extensions are pack system packages that you have to install. We have a lot of a, a lot of extensions available in Wolfy already. I built a bunch of them, uh, and a lot of other people have contributed and everything. But the the image we cannot include everything on the image, otherwise it's gonna be a big image. It's not gonna have any benefits. So our uh, this less PHP image has only a set of extensions that is very similar to Alpine. If you want a new, uh, uh, like uh, more exquisite extensions, and you or you have to build them on the Docker file, do something like that. You can use the dev variants always. The builder has AP key, so you can install anything there and build extensions. Uh, but the extensions are more tricky to copy over to the distro less version. It's possible kind of hacky, but you can copy because it's just like an SO file and config file mostly, most of the time. So it's possible. But yeah, this is the only caveat like uh, that I think that I find like, as a PHP developer that uh, was sometimes challenging for me in a few applications, but it must be very like specific. Uh, most extensions, common extensions are already there. So that's there. And in terms of like, uh, Debugging, there are ways to debug nowadays also, dev containers and things like that. It can uh, also Docker dev, I think, something like that, that it's possible to use. So yeah, those are the most, these two things, extensions and debugging, distroless, the distroless images. But with the builder, it's a lot easier to deal with these things. Cool. I think at least also answered this one already, but... Um... Any gotcha okay. when migrating from Alpine images? Uh, it's very straightforward. There are a few differences. We have a migration. Uh, we have a migration uh, like a, yeah. In, in edu.chainguard.dev, we have some migration guides, and there is an Alpine compatibility page that you can see. Some uh, packages or are not available in Wolfie, or, and there's a little difference on the BusyBox uh, package. So a few a few uh, applications, a few commons are not available in Wolfie, and a few commons in Wolfie are not available in Alpine. So there is a few differences, but it's nothing major. Like most things are pretty much the same. Um, yeah. And when you're gonna, if for searching for package, always remember to run APK updates, if you can, Use Wolfie Base, log into Wolfie Base, run APK updates, and search for the packages that you need with APK search. Cool. I think that is all the questions, but we did put a poll up. What image would you like to see next? Python, Node, or other comment in chat? I see some people nice. um, voted for other comment in chat, but I don't see any comments in chat. Oh, there. Mm -hmm. Anybody mm -hmm. wants to? Share, yeah. Let us know. We're Let us know. <laughs> More PHP, More PHP stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's been re-requested. 
cool. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I think we can wrap it up. Uh, thank you so much um, for joining. Thank you, Erica, for the amazing um, presentation. Um, okay, MPM or go. We got you, Derek. Um, so thank you. Our next learning labs will be um, actually on Python. Um, and I'll send it over here in the chat, but you also get an email um, with the registration link. So we hope to see you then. Um, and I think Patrick will be leading that, who's also on the call right now. So really excited. Thank you as always. And I hope you all have a fabulous day ahead. Bye-bye. Thanks everybody. Um salve pro Brasil. Valeu.